This is Cash Color Campus, a high level of conversation on LiveHipHopDaily.tv. And this episode is sponsored by Atlantibus Clothing. Our drug lord, Return to Vipers, and Atlantibus Signature Collections are all available for sale now at AtlantibusClothing.com. So make sure you stop by and shop today. All right, so we got, um, I did a little something special this week. You know, Black Friday is coming up next week, and normally I do my Atlantibus City Market event at the last Friday of every month. But um, I didn't want to I didn't want to battle with Black Friday. I didn't want to battle with that traffic or do anything like that. So I said, you know, it'd be better to try to combine the show with the event. So we decided to bring it together tonight. So um, our guests tonight are actually both focused on business and not necessarily the cannabis space. So, um, and the first person I have tonight, Ebony, Ebony um, Thompson. I've been following you on Instagram for a little while now, and it's mainly because of C3 Village, and I was, I was um, always in, interested in what C3 was. So um, I jumped in your DMs, shot my shot, <laughs> and see if I can get you on the show, and I actually have been able to get you on the show. So, Ebony, thank you for coming downtown tonight and hanging out with our crowd for a second. Um, this is our actual first time meeting each other. You know, normally it's, everything is online. But um, I got just a chance to get to know you tonight. So um, before we get into our interview where we discuss C3 Village and how you operated through COVID, um, building co-working spaces for people of color, and I also want to get into your top five Jay-Z albums. Oh, did, you, did we get? Did you finally listen to Kingdom Comes? I didn't. In I didn't. I'm uh, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm judging you already, number one. But Ebony, um, please introduce yourself. Let people know what you do. All right, so I'm Ebony Monique Thompson. Mm -hmm. um, I am an author. I am a, a serial entrepreneur. I'm a dreamer. Um, Sorry. Oh, stuff happens. Yeah, Do you see where we at? <laughs> <laughs> Do you see this car? Stuff happens. It's all good. Yeah. Um, serial entrepreneur. Um, I'm a dreamer, um, and and I'm just a, a, a big lover of black people. That's what's um, up, yeah. man. I love black people too. I love everything. About us. <laughs> I love black people too, man. I feel like you know, in 2020, the, uh, of all the weird things that's happened this year, I feel like. I've watched the world at least attempt to try to hug black people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> try to. Yeah, at try least to. Attempt, attempted to try to at least hug black people. Even if it's just around. through a black square, but yeah. <laughs> so um, but before we get into C3 Village, um, talk to us about your professional background. Um, I know you just mentioned you're an author, serial entrepreneur, but um, speak to us about your professional background, I guess, how all that led up to C3 Village. Um, so I have been in the digital space. Okay. Um, I started out as a social media manager um, for artists like Nappy Roots. Mm -hmm. Um, I also went on to handle social media for tech entrepreneurs um, like Paul Judge um, and uh, really kind of found my niche in managing social media. So that's where my, my business part started. I really kind of built my, my empire, if you will, from that. Um, and then after that, I just realized after I kind of left the um, the corporate world, I started to see there was a lack of space for us to actually work. Yeah. Um, that didn't feel pretentious. That didn't feel like I had to come in there and be dressed to the nines. And I had to make sure that I was on at all time and I was trying to sell to somebody at all times. Yeah. Sometimes I just want to go in and work. I don't want to have to be bothered with nobody. I ain't trying to do my or elevator make, like, pitch. Or make you feel like you should have been part of Jack and Jill. <laughs> uh, or make you feel like you should have been part of Jack and Jill yeah, when you walked in here. It's never been my scene. Yeah, and so, yeah, I mean, right. there, there's, a, there's a time and place for that, right? But for me, I just saw that there was a, there was a lack of that for people like me. Um, and so I belong to a co-working space um, uh, called 3411 in Chambly. Okay. Um, and I rented a, a small little, maybe 150 square feet. Um, and I was paying, I was paying enough. Yeah, I was okay. paying enough for one, one room. And I was like, yo, this is crazy. I'm paying this. And I really feel like I could put a little, invest a little more and have a space for other people. Yeah. So I was walking one day in downtown Stone Mountain. I came across this space. I called up the owner. Um, he came up and showed me the space and he, you know, God bless him. Um, he thought I just wanted to see half of the space. He was like, you're not, you're not, you surely you're not coming to see all 3000 square feet. Yeah. Um, but he, he showed me the space and I was like, yeah, yeah, I want it. <laughs> I want it. He was like, what? I don't, oh, yeah. I was like, it's, it's fine. You don't have to see it. I see it. And um, we started the renovations on C3 in uh, October of last year. Congratulations. That's a quick turnaround, man. Opened our doors um, actually two weeks before COVID was named a pandemic. Congratulations again. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good, though, because we've, we've grown. We've sold out all of our private offices. We've, um, we've had members who are just trying to get away from home and get away from their kids, get away from their spouse. And they are looking for somewhere to work that they that can be quiet and is going to allow them to be however they want to be when they're working or building or doing anything. And so we've been blessed to stay afloat 
yeah. thus far. So. Yeah, you know, I wanted to get into that conversation. Also, funny story, because I was just texting them. Scales is actually coming by tonight from Happy oh, Room. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they, they actually told me, yeah, Cal and Scales are coming through tonight, man. So that's actually funny. But um, going, you know, it's crazy you opened right before COVID. You know, we, we all have our COVID stories, being that 2020, again, has been the 2020 that it has been. I was here in the studio like a week prior before they did the shutdown, and I was, I was one of the many people saying, ain't nothing going to happen. <laughs> ain't, ain't nothing gonna happen and then i promise you a, a few days later i'm sick and then the whole city said that yep. yeah so it yep. went that quick yep. um we all had to kind of get adjusted to new things we all had to get adjusted to new ways of doing things rather rather quickly you yep. know um and being a person who's literally opening a business at this time how hard was it for you to kind of get your feet settled you know like you you just opened this business and right now you're getting you're being faced with a whole new set of um, obstacles um it was it was it was the ultimate test of do you believe in what you're planting, yeah. right? So a lot of times we plant stuff and we all we look and we look at the ground and we like, yo, I, I planted it. Where is it? And then you plant it and then the crop right next to you is dying <laughs> and you start to say, well, mine is surely going to die too. Well, yeah. how much do you believe in what you put into the ground? Are you watering it enough? Are you doing what you need to do? Yeah. And so it was, I mean, it was tough. It was times where me and my business partner would sit there and I'm like, Yo, we've signed this lease. It's it's no going back. So yeah, we either gotta do something. Either we turn this into a co-working space, or we about to do something with it because we got to make something jump. We signed this lease. We on the on the hook for it. So. Make it the coolest Airbnb. It, something, <laughs> something. something. Well, the city of Stone Mountain is a little a little different, a little strict. Everybody is um, often scared of coming to Stone Mountain, or you know, apprehensive of because because of the past and the clan being there. But I always tell people it's ninety percent black there. It's ninety percent black businesses. Ninety percent of my money is spent in Stone Mountain Village and it's black businesses. Um, you're talking about black barbers, you're talking about black restaurants, you're talking about black coffee shops, co-working spaces. And so um, the city of Stone Mountain has a history to where it keeps people kind of away. Um, but we, we're kind of trying to change that narrative. Okay, that's great, man. Um, we do have other co-working spaces around the city, yep. everywhere from... Um, Oh, actually, one of them just jumped out my head. But we have plenty of plenty of spaces around the city. Yeah. What makes C three so unique that say a person like myself who does who is that's another reason why I have you on the show who is looking for a co worker space who is looking for a space to kind of work that's outside of my where I'm at. Mm -hmm. What would make that unique place for me? Um, for me, it's more of a village. Okay. It's and and that's the entire name is that um, when you come into a co working space, you're sharing not only your working space, right? You're sharing your creativity. You're sharing your energy. And this is it, energy is transferable. So everybody who comes through our doors, it's not just hey, we here's here's three, four hundred, five hundred dollars. We want to be a part of the co-working. No, we want to make sure you're gonna gel and yeah. fit. And so it's not an application process, but we want to make sure that you know what you're signing up for. Um, on top of that, of course, we have our wonderful amenities, super fast Wi-Fi. All of these are, are not reasons that you would join a co work should join a co working <laughs> space, but we have a relaxation room that gives you a massage chair, all of those things. But more than that, it's because it's we, we're not some big organization that has millions of dollars. This was literally built from my five year old daughter was pulling nails out of the wall to plaster, help us plaster the wall. This is a family business. This is um, two wives, two mothers who have got together and said, we want to try to change the narrative. I'm unapologetically black. My partner is white, but she respects and she understands. And you do have a partner. I didn't get a chance to mention yeah, yeah, her name. Yeah. And, and she respects that and, and she understands that and she's a, a complete ally in the paint. We'll stand in the paint. We'll hand every type of book that you can read on it. Um, but I think that to answer your question, it's just that we are a village and we are um, supportive in the fact of however you want to work and exist. In. Yeah. You know, so in this new space that we, I guess, we're, we're trying to get adapted to. Places like C3 Village are going to become needed. You know, you're going to have smaller rooms that people are going to be able to even be in. So it's needed that we have spaces like this in order to even continue to work. I was on your website and I actually thought you put together a really good blog piece about that, about mm -hmm. why this is the why going through this into the new area that we're going into, why this would be more part of the new normal. Mm -hmm. Can you speak about why co-working spaces such as C3 Village are going to be part of the new normal? Um, I'll answer from the area of one of our members as a teacher. Um, he's unable to go back to the classroom right now. Mm. But his, his school is actually footing the bill for him to come to our co-working space and work. I so it is, it's going to cut down the cost of overhead. So if you think about a business who has, let's say, 3,000 workers in there, they have to pay for lights, electricity. They have to pay for security. They have to pay for all those things. So when you wipe out, when COVID comes and wipes out all of us being in one space, they're then going to say, well, we're going to be able to cut costs by 
covering let's say three or four hundred two hundred dollars a month for their co-working space so it cuts down the overhead it brings in just the necessity of still being connected without also stepping the lines of your home work life like wife balance yeah that's good man yeah I, I've, I've been looking at co-working spaces for a little while you know um being that the space that i am in with cash color cannabis urban grow media you're always kind of iffy you yeah. know we are we are linked towards cannabis mm -hmm. we do we do our interviews with black Bit, um, influencers and business brands mm -hmm. um, in that in, in this space. So I've always been kind of iffy about where to kind of bring us at. You know, yeah. we, we, we'll always have, carry a stereotype with us no matter where I go. You yep. know, it's yep. just basically off the name. So mm -hmm. even if I tell you we're just going to be in here doing basic interviews, yep. people are going to be nervous. Yep. So would you be open to having a cash color cannabis there? Like yeah. I said, we would do our interviews. Of it, would this be a space that we would be comfortable? At? Of course. I think I, I think I sent you an email like when I first or a DM when I first she started did. following you, and I was like, Yo, we <laughs> want did. you in C three. And she I did. Said, it's like you know how you read it and it's like scene and you be like all right i'm gonna act like act like i ain't see it it's, it's all good it's fine but it's good because yeah. it worked the way it's supposed to because i mean you have to feel somebody's vibe to see if yeah. they're genuine and make sure that it would be good we're actually right next door to a cbd shop so we are um we are slowly the yeah. city of stone mountain i say we the city of stone mountain is slowly starting to edge into understanding that this is the way that this is going to go and um it's our space. We can do what we want to. <laughs> ah, that's what's up. I love hearing stuff like that. So, um, how are, you know, going into 2021, have you thought about new ways to streamline the business? You know, again, there, there are still going to be certain restrictions here and there. Like, are we going to see more Zoom applications happening through there, um, more virtual events? Um, yeah. I know you do live events as well. Mm -hmm. Like, what are some of the plans you have going into 2021? Um, so, we're going to be restarting our, um, our classes that we have for our members. So, mm -hmm. we last, or actually this year, 2020 seems like it was a whole year ago. It but seems like it's it five years. Is all today crazy like, it's, it's going, man. <laughs> um we had live classes we have zoom classes we have yoga classes that we offer um, we're going to be bringing in classes to talk about finances how to get your finances together as entrepreneurs because that's one of the biggest things we don't learn we're told get into business hustle 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 do it and then uncle sam comes and you're like yo nobody told me about quarterly taxes nobody so we're trying to get people equipped and know um through all of the aspects of how to run your business how to do social media and really they'd be a one-stop shop where you come there and you can you know get all the knowledge you need so yeah i think that's so funny you mentioned you work with nappy with nappy roots they literally walk up stairs <laughs> they about, they about to, they, oh, they, gosh. Just this part. that gosh. is so crazy man that's crazy. so um it's, it's crazy you got a hip-hop background you know when I, we, we were actually dming a couple of days ago and i learned that you actually are a fan of jay-z you I just am. missed some albums i am <laughs> i am i'm a huge jay-z fan so let's talk about your hip-hop background briefly um so working with nappy roots I'm, I'm, I'm what was that like like and how did you find yourself working with them they haven't popped they, they ain't here yet i can answer truthfully cool no um it was great so um i was a fan of theirs i can remember the first time i heard their their uh here at all nah and i would think i was in college and i was like you know my family's from kentucky so yeah. it's a certain level of pride yeah um it was a pride for all kentucky yeah i went to john c smith i remember oh, when that okay. happened yeah oh man it's, it's a the, moment it's the one it's the one act yeah you know what I'm saying? Yep. it's like it's who we have yep yep so i heard the music and i was a fan and um then just you know they came to a concert in alabama when i was living there yeah. and we just connected and um i was like yo you know lovingly because they're my brothers now but i was like yo y'all social suck like it's it's it's, it's bad it's really bad yeah. And hey, <laughs> y'all hey, social wasn't that bad. No, they just walked in. <laughs> no, it was trash. You can say it. <laughs> no, I was like, y'all social needs help. And so um, yeah. they graciously allowed me to. And it, it developed into now going on like a 10 year friendship, relationship, um, you know, working together and being able to see, you know, them catapult and go beyond just hip hop, yeah. getting into brewery, getting into different areas. So it's been a, it's been a good ride. They have, they have afforded me the opportunity. I will always say, I, I always give people their flowers because I've worked with some of the biggest brands on the corporate side. I've worked with some of the biggest tech startup and if I had not had the experience with them starting out, I would not have had the experience to go to the table and be like, yo, I know what I'm doing. That's what's up, man. So let's get into this Jay-Z history, man. So uh, what are your top five Jay-Z albums? Man, I don't have my phone right here with me. <laughs> I, I did. So, okay. Obviously, Reasonable Doubt yeah. has to be. Reasonable Doubt has to be on there. Um, dang, I don't have my phone right here with me. Uh, you know, um, I argue all the time. Like, Reasonable Doubt's my, probably my number one album overall and Jay-Z album. But I'm struggling. Like, I really think that American Gangster is so uh, underrated. And American Gangster is literally the grown-up version of Reasonable Doubt. Like, please go listen to this album. It's the same album. It's the, When you go track for track, too, you go listen to this album. Like, yo, this is actually Reasonable Doubt. 
I just struggle with it. I just. <laughs> I just struggle with it. I just. You know, I think it what threw people off was how he put it out. Because it was almost like Jay Z prior to what he's doing now with Title, where you can kind of just do what you want to yeah. do. Bro put out an album that was based off a movie that had no affiliation with said movie. It came off like a mixtape, but he that, said, fuck it. That's <laughs> like, what I, and that's what I struggle with. That's why I probably didn't touch it because it felt like it felt like a soundtrack type yeah, of thing. But and it, I was, wasn't. it wasn't. Mm -mm. I'm, I promise this week, by the end of this week, I'm going to listen. Yeah, please. Do. A Reasonable Doubt, definitely. Um, uh, I want to say Streets is watching. I think I did say Streets is watching is one of my favorites. Streets is watching is underrated. Um, yeah, the movie itself. Yeah. A lot of people haven't even seen the movie. I introduced my wife to the movie about two months ago. <sighs> did she love it? She did. Like I, I was the one shocked you haven't seen it. Like you ever been offended by something? Like dog, how have you not seen this? Like I've been like <laughs> come on. Like I saw this like a million. I got yeah. I got the tape. I yeah, I was gonna say the VHS. VHS I have like, the VHS. How have you not seen this? <laughs> yeah, Streets is watching. I mean. Anything for me before a certain time is before American Gangsta is probably yeah. my my favorite. You know, I argue with people that I think Jay Z. The only verses Jay Z can honestly do is versus himself. Like it's, it's ninety nine in two thousand six home mm. versus oh six to the you know what I'm saying home. Like that's the only actual. I'm battle probably he gonna, I'm probably gonna get a little a little slack for this, but I think that the other, only other person who can take Jay in terms of hit for hit yeah. is gonna be Drake. Drake, like Aubrey Drake? Hit. Drake? Yeah. <laughs> Drake? I uh, listen, but they they're not they're not going based when they do verses, when they do verses, yeah. they're not going based on they're not doing anything other than hit for hit. Yeah. So yeah. we look at it on the chart. Bro. Chart I, for chart. It's nobody they're not doing it based on anybody I singing argue, or look, I Marvin's that, room or nothing. Else. I argue that Drake doesn't honestly have any real hits. Like I think that I, I yeah, I will, damn it. Drake has microwave songs. Like he has songs that are real good. Like almost like food you get you get from a takeout. All right, it's good <laughs> it's gonna be good the first night you eat it. It might be good the next morning. The second you put that in the microwave, it's a wrap. You don't want it, you know this. I feel like Drake makes music that is that. Like it's good the first round, it's good the like um Nice for what is going to be that record. I promise you, that's going to be the record. He's going to get on stage one day and say, I hate performing this record, but I have to because y'all nice. like it. That record is terrible, man. <laughs> that, that no, record yeah, is so that's, cool. not, that's not one of my favorites. No, nah, it's almost like he went through hashtags and just said, I'm just going to put everything <laughs> I've seen online into a song. And then I watched people cheer that on. And I was like, and this is why I hate him. Like, like stop doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Stop doing this to Listen, music. Stop I, doing this. I can't this. put anybody else against Jay. Like yeah. nobody else will be able to hit for hit. Honestly, wise. I think Drake would have a good chance at it. I mean, of course, because he has actual hit records. It's just seeing Drake and Jay Z in the studio. You're automatically yeah. going to say Jay win this. Yeah. Like, looking at Drake yeah. just makes you not like him. Yeah. <laughs> against Jay, yeah. Yeah. It's just like Definitely. the minute you see him, it's like ah, uh, nah. Vote against him. I don't care if you run against Trump. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care if you run against Trump, dog. Vote I'm against, against him. Trump. I appreciate you coming out. Um, for those who want to learn more about c3 village um they want to get more involved in, in, more into it how can they do that sure uh so we are uh on all social platforms at c3 village we're at c3village.com you can also um follow me on ebony monique and then my social media agency which we didn't even touch on that which is fine uh is the persona agency oh, you can bad. yeah no 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 you don't we we here to talk about c3 yeah <laughs> no, you good. But also the persona agency, um, and and we just we're trying to make sure black people are unapologetic in any way, shape, or form. That's what's up, man. Ebony, thank you very much for Appreciate coming it. out tonight. Please mingle and let people know more about C three three C three Village. I'm a CP three C three. I got NBA on my mind. They're making trades and all this. <laughs> let people know about C three Village, and please make sure you stop by our vendors and make sure you 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 kick it with them before Definitely. we start our next round of interviews. Definitely. Thank you, man. That's Appreciate Cash it. Color Cannabis live from Live Hip Hop Daily. That's part of Atlanta Bis City Market. You got to be Atlanta Bis. City Market to know why that's extra long now. But the, <laughs> and that's it. Thank you. All right. So